What's happening everyone, welcome back to another video. This time I'm going to be continuing on with our Mark V Golf GTI truck car project. However, the car's not even here at the minute, it's actually off getting a cage fitted. Um, we're getting a full weld-in cage by Bill Watson up at RS Motorsport and it's, it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, and there'll be a video about that so I'll catch up and uh, sort of keep you up to date with that uh, as and when. Uh, for this video, I'm going to jump into a question that I've been getting asked quite a lot. And that is, what is T for Psy? Totally fucking shit idea, some people would say. You know, some people just can't get away with the, the plasticky manifolds and uh, rotter covers and the very, very tappy engine T for Psy's. But, you know, from an engine development technology and efficiency point of view, you, you can't argue. I mean, these, this is a T for Psy engine, by the way. I'm not just patting some random bit of metal here. This T for Psy engine is a world away from the 18Ts that came before it. Um, the interesting thing really is that the T for Psy and the 18T come from the same VAG group family of engines, so EA113. Uh, they actually share a very, very similar bottom end. So cam belt driven, internal water pump. Um, the bottom ends are actually quite similar. Have I just said that? I don't know. <laughs> and it's these similarities that we can take advantage of when we're building better 20 valve engines because the crank out with this T for Psy can go straight in there with stroker pistons and then we've got a two litre uh, 20 valve engine which is you know really cool uh, but that's pretty much where the similarity ends because it's actually up top the cylinder head the fuel injection system that's when it all changes so before the T for Psy came around the 18T was the VAG group's petrol four cylinder engine of choice it features manifold port injection where the injectors are mounted directly onto the inlet manifold and they spray onto the back of the inlet valves. Now this type of fueling is called homogeneous fueling and that is where the fuel and the air mix homogeneously <laughs> or completely uh, and then it's drawn into the cylinder and then combusted. However, at the start of the early 2000s where stricter emission laws plus the drive for more efficient engines meant that port manifold homogeneous injection just wasn't going to cut it they needed to up their game quite a bit and that's why the t for Psy system came in turbo fuel stratified injection that's what t for Psy stands for uh, and not totally fucking stupid idea <laughs> as a lot of people would think um, and that's essentially where this engine gets its name from uh, turbocharged of course it's got a turbo fuel stratified injection that's the type of fuel injection system that this employs now on this engine the injectors are mounted in the cylinder head and can fire fuel straight into the cylinder. Now this system does allow for a homogeneous fuel mixture, just like the 18T. It works a little something like this. When the piston comes down on the induction stroke, that's when the fuel injector injects. It mixes with the air that's been drawn in and then it compresses and is then combusted. Simple as that. However, there's also another mode and that is stratified mode. And this is a completely different mode of fuel into homogeneous like before. The word stratified actually means layers. Now, unlike homogenous, where the fuel is injected on the induction stroke, in stratified mode, the fuel is injected on the compression stroke. So just as the piston's coming up through the cylinder, the injector gives off a little blast of fuel. That fuel mixes with the air in a small little cloud that centers around the spark plug and then is ready to be ignited. Now, that's layer one. Layer two is like a blanket of fresh air that sits around that little mixture cloud in the middle of the cylinder. And then when the whole thing is ignited by the spark plug, uh, it creates a really, really lean burn. I mean, there's, there's hardly any fuel in there at all. There's such little fuel that if the fuel and air that's in the cylinder mixed together homogeneously, well, the engine just simply wouldn't run. There's just not enough fuel for that. So it's the process of stratification which makes this engine able to run on a tiny, tiny, a little bit of fuel. How friggin' awesome is that? I mean, the, the 18T engine just can't compete with that level of efficiency. The direct injection that the TFSI engine has means that it can run stratified mode and be more efficient. On top of that, there's even more benefits. Because the fuel is injected directly into the cylinder, that has a cooling effect, uh, which means that the TFSI engines have a higher knock threshold. They can run more compression ratio. They can also run more ignition timing. Is someone using a drill next door, honestly? I'm filming, man. And with the advancement of the variable valve timing on the T for Psy engine, it means that it's, it's a more efficient engine. But on top of that, it's more tunable as well. There is a few limitations though, as there always is with engines. I mean, first of all, stratified mode is only really good at idle and low RPM. Maybe it's up to 3000 RPM. 
after that the engine's moving so fast that there's not actually that much time to inject the fuel which encourages soot particulates and nitrous oxides to increase massively. So stratification mode's great, but only below 3000 RPM. There is an elephant in the room though, and that is some of the early TFSI engines that didn't have good enough exhausts to be able to run the full stratification. So stratified mode just didn't kick in. They just ran in homogenous all the time, which is, that's a little bit crap in it. You've got all this technology, but you can't do it. Come on. I don't want to blow everyone's minds with facts though. I just want to give a bit of an overview of the TFSI system and the, some of the advantages that it has. And we'll go through this in future videos when we're actually putting together this track car and then tuning it, which will be pretty cool. I'll show it all. Um, sadly, for this project, I think it's time for the at and to leave the room. Now, if any of this flicks your switch, then you might be interested to know that these engines also give a bit of an insight into the development of fuel injection systems over the years. It started with manifold port injection of the 18T that could do homogenous fueling. TFS eyes, they can do homogenous and stratified through their direct injection, but it can't do the both at the same time. That one came later in the EA treble eight Gen 3 engines that were getting Golf R's, Audi S3 8Vs. They have manifold port injectors and they have direct injectors and they can run homogenous stratified and homogenous stratified at the same time which means they can benefit from you know the direct injection and port injection all in one package it's pretty cool and them engines are super super tunable plus they have vvt on the exhaust side as well so it's just amazing what we can do with them engines but this is a good start So just take the injectors out of the manifold and put them in the cylinder head, fire some fuel in and it'll all be cool, won't it? Sadly not. There's some engineering challenges that have to be answered for the TFSI engine to work. And uh, that is mainly around the injectors themselves uh, with pressure and time. Can you see that? You can, can't you? Right. Let's talk about pressure and time. First of all, pressure. It's more of a pressure differential and it is about the pressure measured at the tip of the injector, but also the pressure in the fuel rail at the back of the injector. Now, if the pressure at the tip of the injector is higher than the pressure in the fuel rail, then of course, when the injector opens, fuel just simply won't come out. I mean, that's physics and stuff. Now, in a port manifold injection system, and in like an 18T, you'll generally run three bar base fuel pressure. Uh, the pressure inside the manifold will be at vacuum at idle. So that's about three bar above where it's gonna be at least even when you put boost into the manifold, you have a rising rate fuel regulator, which increases the fuel pressure to get over this pressure differential problem. And therefore you're always gonna be at base pressure above boost pressure. It's as simple as that. And that's how a normal manifold injection system will keep the fuel pressure higher than the atmospheric pressure at the tip of the injector. And therefore fuel will always come out. Problem is when you get the tape for size, we're no longer dealing with manifold pressure here. We're dealing with cylinder pressure, which is way higher. I mean, for example, a tape for engine in stratified mode will inject the fuel on the compression stroke. That is when the piston's coming up through the cylinder. The pressure there is gonna be like through the roof compared to what it would be on a, a, a manifold port injection. Three bar fuel pressure just isn't gonna cut it. It's as simple as that. Now I keep mentioning 18T engines and it's, it's a good thing to be honest to have that sort of reference level between what was to then understand what TFSI is. And in terms of time, I'm talking about injector on time here. The TFSI engine is completely different to the port injection engine. For example, on an 18T uh, at max RPM, you might hit a maximum of 20 milliseconds of injector on time. That is how long the injector is open for. And that will be over a period of say two crankshaft revolutions before the spark plug actually ignites. It's quite a lot of time in terms of engines that are going at six to 7,000 RPM, 20 milliseconds is anyway. On a TFSI engine, we're injecting fuel on the induction stroke, which is only half a crankshaft revolution before the spark plug ignites. So port injection, say 20 milliseconds, two crankshaft revolutions. On a TFSI engine, that's only half a revolution which equates to about four or five milliseconds. So, 
you know, a quarter of the time is all you've got on a TFSI engine to inject the fuel. So that issue of the pressure differential and the injector on time being massively reduced means that the TFSI engine actually runs two fueling systems, a low pressure system that takes it from the tank at the back all the way to the engine bay, but then also a high pressure fuel pump that's driven off the intake cam and compresses the fuel right through to the fuel injectors. TFSI engines typically run 50 bar of fuel pressure at idle and on wide open throttle 110 bar. When we tune these engines we can take it right up with the help of high pressure fuel pumps to 130, 140, maybe it's even under 150 bar of fuel pressure. I mean that's just crazy compared to the 3 to 5 bar that you get on a port injection engine. It's quite a massive step forward. Oh, don't go falling asleep, mind. I know this video hasn't been like banter, banter, banter. It's more technical, isn't it? I get asked this all the time. You know, what's the difference with TIFA size and why they're different? And a lot of the 18T boys, they just simply don't understand it. So they, you know, put their nose up at it straight away because it's the successor to this engine. A lot of people just love the 18T and, you know, hey, power to you, I love it too. But I also love the TIFA size. It's a big, big jump in terms of fuel injection technology and the level of control that the ECU has over the engine and the, the combustion process, which is really cool for us as, you know, like modifiers, as tuners, uh, everything from stage one, stage two, stage three, uh, there's a lot more in the Med9 ECU and the TFSI. There's a lot more to log, to, to look at. Uh, and it's, it's, sometimes it can be a tricky one, which is really why I like it. There's a lot of detail in there. Um, I'm a bit of a fiend for the detail, but I thought I'd do this next little bit just to finish off the video. I haven't really talked that much about the cars that the TFSI engine comes in. I think there's loads of videos about there. If you don't know it, then we'll do a little bit now, but I thought I'd talk about engine codes. Now, everyone knows about the fact that lots of engines have different codes. They come in different specs and TFSI is no different. They're just like 18Ts in that respect. So let's go through that quickly. The TFSI engines came in about 2004. It's actually an Audi engine. It's an Audi development thing, and they started off in the Audi A3. But I think it's most notably known for being, you know, in the Mark V Golf GTI. It was the rebirth of the GTI. All this new technology, new DSG gearbox, everything. Everything was put into the Mark V Golf. Uh, and that car came with the AXX engine. Yeah, oh, I've just written that so you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see it now? So the AXX engine came out uh, and that ran till about late 2005 where it was superseded by the BWA. Now the BWA is the one that probably people know the most of because that's like, they're just in everything, you know what I mean? Golfs, Audi A3s, Audi A4s. There's a couple of spin-offs from that as well, like BWG and that, but they're not worth mentioning. Um, they could probably be considered as the K03 turboed cars because them cars came with KO3 turbos. They were good for about 200 brake uh, standard and sort of stage one, you're looking at 250 to sort of 260 brake. You can take it on uh, original hardware right up to like stage two, plus, 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 plus minus, plus, plus, I think you're getting to these days. And for that, on a KO3 frame car, you can probably hit about 290 to 300 brake horsepower. And that's pretty cool. The, the, you know, the, the torque figures for that, what, 350 foot-pounds? I mean, this is ish, you know, ish. But straight away, they do better than 18Ts. They make way more torque, they're a lot more responsive, and they're more efficient, some would say. <laughs> but they're the KO3 engine cars, and they're the, probably the most... Uh, sort of notable ones, like you say, Audi A3s, Mark V Golfs, Audi A4s, all of them typical VAG group cars. Uh, then you've also got the KO4 cars, and this is where it really got good, to be honest. This is engine codes like BYD and BHZ. Uh, they're KO4, obviously. Uh, these are like Mark V Golf Edition 30s, Cupra K1s. Uh, Audi S3s, Audi TTs, all of them good, high, powerful cars. Um, and it all ended with the mighty C 
D L. Now C D L is like the TFSI version of the BAM to the 18T. It's the one that's at the top of the tree. But with a BAM beat on an 18T not being actually that much stronger, I know a lot of people think that the BAM's stronger, but it, it ain't. It's as simple as that. The CDL and the K04 engine cores are actually stronger than the K03s. Stronger block, stronger rods, stronger pistons, and a different casting used on the head. CDL engine also has a higher lift cam uh, on the intake side, which can drive the fuel pump higher. So CDL engine, if anything, is the one to have. Now these came with anything from 240 to 265 brake horsepower, stage one, 300 brake you're gonna get, stage two, plus, plus, minus, plus, 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 uh, 380-ish brake, but for that you get a whopping 400 to say 430 foot-pounds, sick of writing on the board to be honest 400 foot pounds from a production car in a VAG group four cylinder engine that is immense absolutely immense I mean 18 T's can't even do 300 foot pounds because of the bendy rods these engines can do over 400 foot pounds in stock form I mean that's just class no wonder that these engines not only the better they're more efficient but they're also stronger like much stronger it's really cool and if you look at that and you think well well, we are not because the Mark V Golf GTR that we've got that came with an AXX engine. It's probably the weakest of the bunch, but at the same time, ours is even weaker because it's got a knackered cam chain. If there's any engine out there and you're not going to go massive in terms of big turbo, blah blah, if there's any engine out there to have, it's a CDL, which is actually what you've been watching us point at the whole time. I did a deal with one of my customers, a nice lad called Steve. We did a job for him and he led us into the fact that he uh, had this CDL sat in his garage for ages. He had it in a Mark V Golf and someone sideswiped him, written it off. It's actually been built by a pretty well-respected VAG tuner from down south. I'm not going to mention it because the reality is, is I'm, I'm going to dig into this engine. We're going to have a look, see exactly what it's like. I don't want to go naming names, but I'm expecting this because it is low mileage, very, very low miles. Uh, and it's been rebuilt in its life, that this engine will be mint. This will be an awesome addition to our Mark V Golf to get over the fact that we have the weak area XX engine. We also have the snapped cam chain, so that engine is toast regardless. The only thing with this engine is, it has no turbo. We got this engine as a bare block, no turbo, so I'm going to have to get a turbo for it. But to be honest, when you, when you look at the figures and you think, well, CDLs can do, you know, maybe it's up to 380 brake, 400 foot plus foot pounds, which we see regularly uh, for the stage two plus, 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 plus cars that we do. <laughs> so, I mean, it's gonna be, I think a K04 will be good enough for this. I'm thinking this engine, anti-surge core, lots of like little upgrades, lots of rejuvenation, so cam chains and cam belts, all the rest of it. This will plump into our Mark V and it'll be good for that power. Plus we'll do multi-map and all sorts. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll have like a wastegate map and that'll be for Colin and Callum <laughs> when they go on track. And uh, I'll have a full attack map, which will be for me, which will probably be the one that puts us into the barrier at some point, but nah, it's all good fun, isn't it? Anyway, Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully that has been a good little insight into TFSI. If you liked it or if you've learned anything from it, then give us a like. Uh, subscribe if you want to see this Mark V Golf GTI come together with this CDL engine. Should be pretty cool. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, and as soon as we get the Mark V Golf back from the cage uh, being welded in by Bill, I'll, uh, we'll make a video about that. And I'll show you about that because he, he's dead fancy. He does it all on card designs and stuff. But uh, anyway, I'll stop waffling. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.